invite you to uh, join together with me in a moment of silent prayer. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter to the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. 
Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well immediately regained his sight and followed him on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. I was a young pastor serving a suburban church in Minneapolis, a very affluent suburb, and the congregation sent me to a seminar at a hotel downtown Minneapolis because we wanted to see if there was more we could do for the inner city. There are probably a hundred people sitting in the room with me, and the speaker was diligently telling us some insights and helpful things for us to know. I'm taking notes, and life is going on as I would expect it to be. And suddenly, there was a voice that came out of absolutely nowhere. We don't want your handouts! We don't want your handouts. And suddenly there were clothes, used clothes, flying all over the room. And we were stunned. It was like, what just happened here? We don't want your used clothes. We don't want your used clothes. And I'm listening and I'm watching and it was kind of irritating. This was a nice quiet seminar. We were learning things and here's this rebel who's coming through. We don't want your stuff. Well, I have to say, it was quite dismaying to have that experience. But Jesus, in the same way, the text you just heard from Mark, has a similar experience. Jesus probably has a hundred people traveling with him, and he's teaching them. He's giving them insights on life and faith. And they're all sitting there quietly listening, and suddenly a voice that they were not expecting started to yell, and the yelling was, let's read it together, when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And everybody's going, shh, quiet. The rabbi is speaking. We're trying to take notes. Now, they didn't have paper then, so they were having to make mental notes, but they're taking account of what Jesus is saying to them. And they're trying to get him to be quiet, and he just refuses. He said, the text tells us that he keeps telling you louder and louder, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Everybody's going, what is going on here? Why is he being so disruptive? Shh, respect the rabbi. And Jesus, having heard the commotion, says, bring him up here. So let's look at the next text. What does Jesus say? Let's read it together. Throwing his cloak to the side, he jumped to his feet and went to Jesus. He didn't hesitate. 
Here's a guy that we know at the end of the text, he says, could I please see again? So whatever his ailment was, there was a time in his life when he could see, but he lost his ability to see. And I don't know which would be worse, but I think being sighted first and then losing your sight would be far more difficult than someone growing up in a world of darkness. And so for Bartimaeus, for him to have lost his sight and hear that this man Jesus, he's been hearing about and talking about, he's heard other people say he's never heard him before. But when he does, he gives him the chance to look at that and he gets called forward. He throws off his cloak, no hesitation, moves towards Jesus, and I'm sure somebody had to grab him by the hand to take him to where Jesus was. And when he gets to where Jesus is, then what does he say? Let's read it together. What do you want me to do for you? And without hesitation, Bartimaeus says, Rabbi, I want to see. I want to see. What a powerful moment for Bartimaeus. Thinking he was going to be trapped in a world of darkness for the rest of his life, he has a moment where he hears the commotion, he knows it's Jesus of Nazareth, and he makes a scene that nobody else is comfortable with, but Jesus calls him forward and asks the obvious question, what do you want? I want to see. That's what I want, Jesus. I want to be able to see. And what's so fascinating, Mark has used this particular text at this point in Mark's Gospel at the end of chapter 10 because in the beginning of this section in chapter 8, there's another blind man who is given sight, but he's given sight in pieces. He's touched. But Jesus turns to Bartimaeus and he says... Let's read it. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Your faith. Your belief, Bartimaeus, is what's made the difference here today. And because of your faith, you will be able to see again. And the text tells us, let's read it together. He received his sight and followed Jesus. Can you imagine the elation that he felt when suddenly the world of darkness peels away and he can look and see Jesus in the face, he can see the hundreds of people that were around Jesus, and he looks at him and says, wow. What does he do with the rest of his life? Bartimaeus becomes a follower of Jesus. No more will he have to beg on the side of the road. No more will he have to expect other people to take care of him. No longer will he be needing to look at himself as a, just a beggar. But he now has dignity. He now has health in the life of the church. And he follows, willingly follows Jesus. And Mark puts this story here because he's contrasting the disciples who are so blind to what's going on, and here's the blind man whose faith gives him sight. Last week the disciples were arguing over who was going to be number one and number two. And Mark wants us to understand that there's a contrast between those, even though the disciples were sighted, they weren't understanding. And here's the blind man who upon receiving sight his faith transforms his life. What does this text have to do with the Lakes Lutheran Church in 2021? I'd like to suggest there are four things that really stand out for me. And the first one is, be patient, don't give up. Being patient is not easy, folks. 
And so often we want to have, Lord, give me patience and give it to me now. And God says, in time. He had to sit along the side of the road for a long time. We don't know how long, we don't know how old Bartimaeus was, but we do know this, that he waited for his moment. And I think one of the things we as a congregation need to understand is we're going to have to wait too. We, we are blind to what our future looks like. We're not exactly sure what it's going to entail. But like... Bartimaeus, when he heard it was Jesus who was going to be working with him, then he knew that the answer was going to be on the way. So part of what I think is helpful for us as a congregation to know is right now we may feel very blind as to what the future looks like, the long term. For the next seven months you got me, so you're stuck with that. But after that we do know that God is going to make the difference in your life, this congregation's life, and in my life. The second thing we learned from this text is don't delay. Follow God's lead. When God gives us opportunities to do something, then let's not be hesitant, not second-guess ourselves, but let's do as Bartimaeus did. He threw off his cloak and said, here I come, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to draw attention and try and get what my need is. And I think we are in the same way going to be able to do that. Because we aren't going to delay your church council, the leadership of this congregation, are making decisions and they're working with the information that they have and they're moving into the future. And as opportunities present themselves, we will respond. We won't hesitate. We won't second guess. We will allow God to be the lead in where this congregation is going and what it's going to become. The third thing we learned from this text is to assess our situation. Bartimaeus knew he was blind, and when he was given the question, what do you want, there was no hesitation. Uh, let me see, do I want to win the, win the lottery? Do I want to have some uh, beach house in Tiberias? No. I think what I really want to have is my sight. And we as a congregation are going to have some time over the next few months to take a good look at ourselves. What is it that we need? What are our blind spots? What are the things that we're not seeing that we could be doing? What are the things that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing? And we all have blind spots. You have them. I have them. I have fewer. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Talk to anybody in my family, and they will clarify that. <laughs> but when we recognize a self-assessment, it's to see ourselves as we really are. And let's not be blind to who we are. That means we have strengths that we bring to the kingdom of God. We have weaknesses that we also have. And we need to own those. Look at those become people that say, you know what, this is good, this isn't good. We can be decisive. And I think the fourth thing that we learn from this text is be thankful for the options. That Bartimaeus, when given the option of having sight, guess what? His faith gave him the sight that he needed. Jesus allowed him to have the experience of understanding who he was and who he was going to become again as a sighted person. We are fortunate because we do have options. And we can be thankful for each option and we will prayerfully, carefully look at each one. And as we do that process, we are trusting that our faith will give us the sight that we need. 
our faith that God is leading us will allow us to become all that we're created to be as a congregation. So I, for one, am excited about what the future holds. Because I think what God is going to do is be able to say to you as a congregation and to me as your pastor for these months that we can say together, our faith will lead us into a future that right now only God can see. But if we trust God, then it will be there and clear and we will see clearly now what we couldn't see before. Thanks be to God. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord, we ask you to bless our brother and sister congregations of the Grand Canyon Synod and the ELCA. May each of them be beacons of hope in their communities as we seek to be in this one. Lord, in your mercy. Bless the congregations that meet in this building at various times during this week. They too are brothers and sisters in faith, although they speak in other languages and they worship in other traditions. We are grateful for their due diligence to be a lighthouse to their communities as well. Lord, in your mercy. Bless those recovering from illness and operations. Grant them total healing and a sense of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless those who serve others in whatever forms it may take. Give them courage and strength to carry on. Lord, in your mercy. And bless all those who teach students of all ages. May they be given the patience and the wisdom they need to allow their students to become all that they were created to be. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your promise through Christ, who is Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
We give to support the mission of Christ Church as a sign of the giving of our whole selves and grateful response for God's gifts. For those here, please use the blue offering boxes in the sanctuary in the narthex. And for those worshiping from home, offerings may be given online at thelakeslutheran.org or donate through mail and mailing a check to the church. And now we'll have our offering hymn. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heavens, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. share communion together at the end of this portion. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples and took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave them, saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. When he given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do so in remembrance of Christ Jesus. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to take your little packet, pull back the wafer section. Christ's body given for you, I invite you to eat it. And now if you'd open the cup section. Ministering to you on his behalf, Christ's blood shed for you, I invite you to drink the cup. And if you'd be kind enough, we'll collect those at the end of the service as you leave. Let's join together in singing our communion hymn. Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through the healing power of the gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have a few announcements that we want to make. And the first one is, if you are interested in purchasing the amazing book, Gospel of Grace, written by yours truly, there are copies available in Narthex. Christy will be happy to get you one. 
If you would like to participate in the class on Thursday mornings at 10 a.m., it's Zoom. There are some three by five cards at that table. Put your name and your email address, and then we will be able to send you the link so you can have an uh, opportunity on Thursdays from 10 until 11 o'clock. We have study, and we're reading chapters 1 and 2. 1 and 2, there we go. Um, and we'll be discussing those, so if you want to join us, you're welcome to do that. And next week, oh, um, next is the Amazing Grays on Wednesday, October 27th, 9.30 in the library. All are welcome. Anything else we need to know about that, Donna? Brain health. Oh. So if you want to find out how your brain works or could work or should work, then this would be a great time to find that out. I think I'm going to sneak in. <laughs> this would be good. Nine, three. Who's happy that I'm going to sneak in? <laughs> of course it's my wife. <laughs> Get his brain to work again, will you? <laughs> Okay, next week is Reformation Sunday, so we want you to, we invite you to wear something red in honor of the tradition. Some of you got an early start, <laughs> so you can wear it again, we won't care, that's fine. But uh, it is Reformation Sunday, and we are delighted to have a chance to celebrate. Stoles will be red. Uh, paraments will be read, all the good stuff. So, And if you take my book home with you, then you can be well read. <laughs> okay, and the following week is All Saints Sunday, and we invite you to wear something white, because that's All Saints. And if there's anyone who is in your sphere of influence and friendship base, has died in the last year, please call the church office and we'll be reading the names of all the, those who have died since last year's All Saints Day. So we want to give you a chance to let us know who we can include in those prayers. And do we have any other announcements? I think that was the last one. Perfect. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the closing hymn. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. See you next week.